everybody. Levi here, and today, finally going over my bug out bag. It's a few months in the making, and I think I've got it to a point where I want to show it off. So, uh, we're just going to get started with it. Try to make this short and sweet. So, first off, we'll go over the things that are on the outside of the bag. Um, nothing too major. To start off, we have some hand sanitizer, and this, of course, can be put inside the bag if need be. But uh, I just have it there for convenience purposes. And then on this side of the bag, we have the Light My Fire Mora knife. So this guy's pretty neat because you have the knife, which is a really, you know, convenient and useful shape and everything. But inside the handle, there is actually another ferro seam rod for starting fires, obviously. And then I went ahead and painted the sheath green. And I know this isn't going to hold up very well, but better than bright orange like it came. And I have a little pouch here that I got at my local army surplus store. Not sure who makes it. It probably says inside, but that doesn't really matter. Inside it, we have some paracord. This is rated up to 750 pounds here. Then we have, this is a little, um, hygiene kit. So in here we have soap and more soap that I stole from a hotel. And then we have floss, toothpaste, little toothbrush that I broke in half to get it to fit in here. Chapstick, soap, razor. And then these are Wisty wipes and these are kind of neat because what you can do is you can take these and get them wet and they will actually expand into a full-size towelette. And then in this little black pouch here, we have some tweezers and nail clippers. And there's multiple uses for that. So there's that, that kit there. Followed by the Sawyer Mini water filter. And if you guys aren't familiar with this, it's pretty much the best water filter on the market because you get a mix of size, in which case, in this case, it's nice and compact compared to, say, the Life Straw, which is really large and cumbersome. Uh, it comes with a cleaning plunger, a nice straw, and a little pouch that you can fill with water. And um, you can use that to fill up your water bottle, or of course you can drink it directly from the pouch itself using the life straw. And the last thing in here, we have the, uh, the Fire Boss kit. And this has 33 different ways to start a fire, all in this one kit. We have a large ferro rod here. In fact, I'll just open it up and show you what we kind of have going on. We have a large ferro rod. Then we have some cotton tabs, and these are actually soaked with something that's really flammable. Uh, we have magnesium tablets. There's a mirror in here, candles, jute twine, char cloth, matches, a standard lighter and many other, or a few other different ways to start a fire as well. So that is the, uh, the Fire Boss kit here. And this is probably the most important, or if not one of the most important parts of the bug out bag. Tough to break apart. It does feel like it is coated. Go Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. That's 
pretty much it for the pouch. So keep on going from the outside. One thing with this bag is there is no real way to be able to run a battle belt with this. So what I've done is I went ahead and connected a drop leg holster to it and uh, this can be unattached. And I'm not a big fan of drop leg holsters but this is really the only option I have. Uh, unless you guys can think of something better but I can't. And on the other side we have a few magazine pouches and uh, I have it set up to fit my Walther PPQ. That's pretty much it for the outside. This is the Kelty Falcon 4000. It's 4000 cubic inches of space in here, which is 65 liters if I remember correctly. And there's two sections to it. There's this bottom section with a pocket in the front here, and there's this top section. So we'll go ahead and go through this top section. And what's pretty cool about it is it actually disconnects entirely, and you can use it like a fanny pack. You have a clip there and a clip here, and you can put it around your waist and do it that way, like so. But let's go ahead and show you what is inside this part here. So you have an internal pocket, and in here I have some little cable keepers that I got off of Amazon. They're Amazon Basics, and uh, the MSR Groundhog Stakes. And we'll get into what that's used for in a minute. Then we have this little Lifeline boo-boo kit. Uh, I threw in a blister kit as well. That has all of your basics like band-aids and all that good stuff. So good kit for less than $10. And the last thing in this main pocket, we have the Silky Pocket Boy little saw. This thing works really well and uh, comes in a nice little plastic container that keeps it streamlined, easy to manage. Okay, at the very bottom pocket here, we have just a couple boxes of ammo, 9 mil 9mm for that PPQ, 556 for uh, whatever, you know, AR or in my case Beretta that you're running. That's it for that pocket. So you have two more little pockets on the side here. And this one I have some wind breaking gloves and uh, these are actually just really useful in general whether you're in the winter or just on a really breezy day. And uh, we have a shemag as well, which I suck at tying, but it's good to have nonetheless. You can always figure something out. That's it for that pocket. And in this one here, we have a face shield. This is a multicam. Pretty much useful for the same purpose that the shemag is. And then lastly, we have a boonie cap, which being a ginger like me, you need to get out of the sun every now and then. That's what that's for. Then there's another hidden pocket just right in the center or inside of this pocket here. And I keep a little waterproof notebook as well as a couple pens and a little pencil. Oh, oh that's it. So that is it for the top section here. Now let's get into the front pocket of the larger bag. Also, rocking my Borderlands patch. So first off, I have a little, uh, you can kind of call this like a drink kit. Um, there's more in it than that though. So we have cough drops, instant coffee, instant juice. I have a uh, light my fire eating tool. So that has a spoon as well as a fork and all that good stuff. Salt, pepper, some can openers tea and even a pack of cocoa in there and these are in the lock sacks most most of the stuff in here like the Sawyer mini water filter my hygiene kit and my steaks they're all in lock sacks and they're really basically just really tough ziploc bags all right and here we have just like a general purpose pouch 
That's sunscreen, bug spray, knife sharpener, duct tape, and some mole skin to keep blisters from forming on your feet. We've got a couple batteries here. So we have CR-123s for my handgun, the light that's on it, as well as my rifle. And then some triple A's for my little flashlight that I have right here. This is a little Streamlight Micro Stream, and these work great. In fact, I carry one every single day. So there's that. Got another pan there. Got two extra lighters, just because you never know when you'll need those. More the merrier, right? And keep moving on. A little zipper pocket. We have some iodine tablets as well as the tablets that help get rid of that iodine taste. And then a small thing of Advil as well. I'm getting into the last zipper pocket up here. We have the front pocket. We have the Fire Boss Mini Stove and another knife. And the fire box, my bad. This thing is pretty neat. You can open it up. There's directions there. And it just folds out like so. And basically, there you have a little wood, wood burning stove that you can put just about anything on. It comes with a little carbon mat as well. You can put that underneath it to prevent yourself from burning stuff. Or uh, you can also hold it up uh, on the metal tin here and that'll keep it from getting blown out by the wind. So that thing, the thing's pretty cool. You can get a stainless steel version like I did or you can also get titanium as well which would save a little bit of weight but it's a little bit more expensive and so that's why I just went with the standard stainless steel. Put this on here. Yeah, down here, Let me get another worm, okay? I got some. You need another worm? I lost half of my worm. Oh. Damn. Appreciate it. Get another worm. <laughs> oh, is that what happened? <laughs> yep. It was huge, bro. We barely contained. Ooh, there's a spider inside my pot. Oh, no. Alright, so uh, admittedly it's not the easiest thing to use, but... Uh, ultimately got the job done. Got some pad thai cooking up. Backpacker's pantry, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have to see how that is. That's it for the front pocket. There's another section here in case you have some sunglasses or anything that can get scratched. You can throw those there to prevent it from getting scratched. Okay, now main into the main compartment. The Kelty cinches up in two different spots, which is nice. So I have it lined with a contractor grade trash bag that's to keep everything from getting wet if say it's raining outside or if I have to cross a river or whatever. First things first, I have my trauma kit and this is normally part of my battle belt but like I said I can't run both of these so if I ever need to use this bag I'm going to take it off of my battle belt as I did here and throw it in here. This has basically anything to treat heavy bleeding, so whether it be gunshot wound, stabbing, or anything else. I have a soft tea tourniquet there, and then some mechanics gloves. Of course, there's also rubber gloves inside of here as well. I just keep the mechanics there because they're it's easy to get to. Next up, we have the Kelty Cosmic 20 sleeping bag. Uh, just a good down sleeping bag that folds up pretty nice or pretty nice and tight makes it easy 
picks up we have the climate static v this is an insulated sleeping pad with an r value of 4.4 which if i remember correctly that means that it will be good in temperatures up to negative 30 degrees roughly. After that, we have the Outdoor Research Alpine Bibby, and uh, this is made out of Gore-Tex, so it's going to keep all of the uh, Mother Nature, really. It'll keep all the harsh conditions off of you, whether it be snow, rain, even hail, although I don't think I'd want to get caught in the hailstorm with this, but it'll help keep you dry. That's the main thing. After that, we have the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket. Uh, this is basically like a, a whoopee, except a little bit different. Uh, from what I've heard, it keeps you a little bit warmer, although it is a little bit smaller than the whoopee is. After that, we have some basic clothing, some wool socks, as well as normal socks, boxers, and uh, a base layer pant as well. Next up, we have the Alps Mountaineering. Uh, air pillow just blows up in one or two breaths and works pretty well actually. After that we have the Sea to Summit Reactor Extreme sleeping bag liner and this is supposed to add up to 25 degrees to your sleeping system although that's a that's a stretch to say the least but it is better than not having a sleeping bag liner. Again, these are lock sacks and they are full of uh, dehydrated meals. They're just handy. There's about nine different meals in here. I also threw some instant oatmeal and some M&Ms just for, just to have really. And uh, this should help. There's more than nine. There's probably 12 or 13 different meals in there. And that's just about three days worth of food and then some. So. After that, we have the uh, this is a Coleman PVC rain suit. This is in the bag that the Kelty Cosmic 20 came in. Um, but I wanted a compression sack for the actual sleeping bag and that's why I put the after, or put it in an aftermarket uh, stuff sack. But here we have just a pretty standard rain suit made by Coleman. A little he on the heavy side but it works and you, know, you win some and you lose some. After that we have a military surplus mess kit. I don't remember exactly where this is from, but it's a pretty neat kit. Uh, it comes with a pouch. And you can open this up. There's a little bowl. And then an even littler bowl. Then you have a canteen. And lastly you have the aluminum pot that it all stores right in. So pretty compact, 
neat little system. Of course, there's always lighter weight stuff out there, but I just like the way that this one all folds together, so that's why I got it. That's pretty much it for that part. And then we have just a couple more things to look at, and we're all done. Got at least three more of those contractor gray trash bags for whatever reason I may need those for. And then we have the Source Tactical 3 liter water bag or hydration pouch. Um, and it weaves right out of the bag and it's nice and easy to get to. And then last but not least, we have a little Colorado map and uh, this thing is kind of not very good, but better than not having one, I suppose. It uh, shows you the basics of it. There's a whole state there. And then to end it all off, we have a little compass here. And uh, <coughs> I don't remember who makes this one. It's a Silva Ranger 2.0, if I remember correctly. It comes with a mirror. Of course, you can use it as intended, but you can also use it as a signal mirror, just like that. And then you have the compass itself. So, all in all, this is my bug out bag. And uh, I guess there is maybe one more thing I can show you real fast, or two more things. When you do take off the top pouch of the bag, you can open it up in the back here. And then you have another pocket and another cover for the top, and that'll keep moisture and stuff from getting in. And then we also, on the very back, and bottom have a zipper with a rain fly built into the bag itself. One side is brown, one side is white. So say if you were in colder climates you can where there's snow on the ground you can use the white to kind of help yourself stay hidden a little bit. bag itself is adjustable with velcro here on either side so you can make it lower or taller to fit your body type a little bit better. Alright, well that's pretty much it. I'll uh, be sure to include some b-roll footage so I can show you more details on some of the stuff specifically. But that is my entire I'm never coming home bag or bug out bag laid out right in front of you. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll go ahead and see you all later guys back again so I'm here packing everything up and a uh, few things I forgot to mention this pack weighs in about 45 pounds wet so that's with the uh, hydration bladder full and um, the intended purpose of this bag is to be a cold weather because I live in Colorado so a cold weather uh, I'm never coming home bag so basically an inch bag that's what inch stands for I'm never coming home and uh, this is like all hell breaks loose and you have to grab your stuff and just go and never come home so uh, that's what this bag is for not it's like a bug out bag just with a little bit more so you may think 45 pounds is a bit heavy for that or for a bug out bag and uh, it is and that's why this one isn't a bug out bag instead it's an inch bag so that's all
finally put some miles in with the bug out back. Yeah. Kind of sucks. I mean, there's 45 pounds there, but it's really not that bad. The uh, cushion hasn't really conformed to the shape of my back yet. But once it does, it's definitely going to be a lot more comfortable. Um, I'm able to walk over stuff. I don't really feel top heavy or anything, so I don't feel like I'm going to fall over. And, uh, making it to some decent spots here. So I can't really complain too much. Thank you. 